Annette Weiss, awakens in the middle of the night to find her husband on the floor screaming and shaking uncontrollably. He has just returned from a 23-minute visit to hell. Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Bill Weiss. He says he literally went to hell. Now, Bill, if I was selecting a candidate to go to hell, and I had such an ability, believe it or not, you would be the one that I would select. Why do I say that? Because we've done research on his background. He's a real estate man. Uh, we checked with his pastor, many years a solid citizen in the church. I even got a letter from a former chief of police in his area giving glowing recommendations. Uh, I understand you've never taken a drug in your life. No. Uh, you, you, you don't drink. No. You, um, uh, you've never been in the New Age or a cult? No, not at all. I've been a Christian for 36 years and devoted you, to the Lord. Never had any problems with the police or no. obviously. No. Uh, so, uh, according to my notes, on November 23rd, 1998, you went to a right. prayer meeting, obviously, right. figures, uh, and, and uh, it's, uh, what, like three in the morning or so, uh, what happened? All right, we came home from the prayer meeting the tw night of the 22nd, went to bed, and at three o'clock in the morning, the Lord picked me up and dropped me off in a prison cell in hell. I found myself in a prison cell. Could you feel yourself dropping, just like some people feel themselves going up to heaven? You, I, I mean, we hear a lot of stories about people going to heaven, but I've read a book recently where a lot of doctors say they don't like to report about it, but when people are coming close to death, they start, they, they, they start literally seeing what appears to be hell, and they're just so fearful. So you literally drop, then what? I dropped, like you said, and found myself in a prison cell with stone walls and bars, just like you would imagine a cell. And I didn't realize where I was at at that moment, but I noticed immediately the heat was incredible heat that I should have been incinerated uh, and died right, right away, but I was still living through this heat. I looked and I noticed there were these two creatures in the cell. They, uh, they were reptilish in appearance, huge, about 12 or 13 feet tall large jaw, big teeth, uh, huge claws, and uh, they were pacing like a caged bull in the cell. Uh, they were talking amongst each other, blaspheming God and cursing God. And now, now you, you told me that the, uh, Jesus had uh, told you later then that he took all memory that you were a Christian. So you went to experience what it was like as a non-Christian in yeah. hell. He withheld it from my mind that I was a Christian and explained that on the way back. but. Also, so I was there as an unsaved person would be, hmm. just like someone had not accepted the Lord. So uh, when I saw these creatures, I didn't realize immediately they were demons, but that's what they were, fallen angels or demons. And they had a hatred for, man, for God and for myself. And uh, they immediately directed their hatred towards me and picked me up and threw me into the wall. I felt my bones break. <gasps> Another one, the other one picked me up and shredded my flesh with his claws, just tore up my flesh. And... Um, you know, my wife and I like to work out and take care of ourselves and eat right, and now none of that mattered because the body was just being destroyed. You know, what kind of pain were you feeling when this was going on? I felt pain. I felt quite a bit of the pain. But again, on the way back, the Lord explained that he withheld a lot of the pain from me uh, so that I wouldn't have to experience the full brunt of it, hmm. but enough of it to let people know there is literal pain felt in hell. You will feel pain in the heat, and the torments are tremendous. In hell. Now, could you hear anything going on? I heard screams of millions of people that were coming from outside the cell. And I knew there were people in other spots, in other prison cells, in pits of fire, in large area of the fire that I'll, I'll get to that I saw. But the screams were deafening, overwhelming screams. It was terrible to even endure that. But you couldn't escape it. It's just so loud and piercing. 
So I, that was one of the things. It, it, it's got to be almost like, say, a Vietnam veteran that um, uh, remembers those things. It's something that you could never forget. Right. Screams. No, you'll never forget them. I, I, I know I won't. But um, I managed to move. I noticed I had no strength in my body at all. You have no strength in hell. So I managed to somehow crawl. That's as much energy as I could get to make a move. And apparently they let me. I crawled out of the cell. And in one direction, it's completely pitch black, a darkness that was beyond any darkness that you could feel here on Earth. And uh, it was a darkness that you could feel, like, like it talks about in Exodus 10:21. But I uh, looked the other direction, and there was a leap, flames of fire leaping high into the sky that uh, was off in the distance. I knew it was about 10 miles away, this huge raging pit of fire. And uh, it lit up the skyline just enough to see the desolate, barren wasteland. Nothing green, no life of any kind, just all barren and desolate. So uh, at that point, I was drugged back into the cell by the demons and more torments. But after that, uh, I was picked up and taken out of that cell and placed over near the pit of fire. And it was enormous, about a mile across, raging flames. And I could see the outlines of people in this fire, screaming. They were being burned in the fire in torment. I didn't want to go in there. It was already hot enough, but I knew I just didn't want to go into the flames. That's that's a terrible thing to have to suffer, and these people were burning. And uh, there were demons all around this cell pushing the people back in as they tried to claw their way out. Uh, they really couldn't get out anyway, but the demons were just there shoving them back in. I felt so awful for the people, but also for myself. And I looked around and I could see all these demonic creatures all around me, lined around the cavern of this, these walls. Uh, they're all different sizes and shapes. There were some huge, some small. There were spiders. There were maggots and worms and uh, big snakes, everything disgusting that you would not want to be around. And they're all there with a hatred for you. You felt this hatred emanating from them. Did you have any feeling like you could get out of that place eventually? No. Do your penance and go? No, no. You have a knowledge. You understand eternity there. I could understand that I was there. I would never, ever get out. Never. And the pains that you suffer are really awful there. But the worst thing really is the separation from God and the hopelessness that you'll never get out. And that's why the Lord wanted me to experience uh, that I didn't know Him, to call on Him, because He wanted me to experience what they feel, hopelessly lost, that you'll never get out. And one of the most tormenting thoughts for me was, I thought about my wife. We're very close, and um, I have told her if anything ever happens in the world, earthquake, sub uh, tragedy, that I'd find a way to get to her. And I couldn't get to her. I would never get out. I would never see her again. Did you hear that? I mean, that is so horrible. I mean, but it gets worse. And he has a message from God for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. To it's Supernatural. On today's program, you have heard only a portion of Bill Weiss's visit to hell and back. Call now and get your copy of his book, 23 Minutes in Hell, and find out the entire story of what he saw, heard, and experienced in that place of everlasting torment and his deliverance by the hand of God. It's yours for a donation of only $15 postage paid. Ask for order number 1041. The book contains revelation knowledge from the Bible, from over 150 verses of Scripture that refer to hell, and why God desires to save and deliver us from this eternal place of suffering. He answers these questions. Is hell a literal burning place? Where is hell? Do you have a body in hell? Are there degrees of punishment? Are there children in hell? Can good people go to hell? What assignment do demons have in hell? This is a great book to share with skeptics and doubters. Call and get your copy of 23 Minutes in Hell for a donation of $15. Postage is included. Or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify order number 1041 or log on to SidRoth.org. Hell is a real place. Don't allow your unsaved loved ones to go another day without hearing the truth about hell. No one has to go there. God's desire is that everyone escapes this everlasting place of torment. Call or write today to get your copy of this most important book. We now return to It's Supernatural. 
Hello, it's Sid Roth here with Bill Weiss, and I don't know about you, but I'm literally on the edge of my seat because I have heard a lot of stories of people who have had visitations to heaven, but you don't hear too many people that have had visitations to hell. My guest, Bill Weiss, was, had his memory removed that he was a Christian and was dropped, as he put it, into a prison cell in hell for the precise purpose of what he's telling us right now. What happened next, Bill? Well, I, I, was, I was thinking about my wife a lot, and then I just wanted to talk to a person, just anybody. But you deny that. You never get to be with people. You never get to talk to anyone. You're just around these demonic creatures that can torment you and torture you. So you're denied that, that access. Uh, I noticed the smells are just terrible, foul odors. So like sulfur smell? Sulfur smell, burning flesh, uh, just the most putrid, rotten smells you could imagine. But you didn't want to breathe. Uh, you couldn't really breathe anyway. There's not enough air to breathe. Every breath took such an effort. It, I, can, I just have to describe it. I breathed like this. It was like, <clears throat> like every breath you could barely get. And I thought, I'm going to die any second from not enough air. But you have to go on living without enough air also. Okay, it's so hot. What about thirst? Did you have that ex sensation? Were you thirsty? Terrible thirst. Absolute, so dry. My mouth was like, like I hadn't drank in weeks uh, a drop of water. And that's how it is for eternity. There's no, no water in hell, Zechariah 9-11. And um, uh, in Luke, the rich man talked about he wanted just one drop of water, how mm. precious it would have been. And that's what it was like. Uh, just a drop was so precious. And that's how water is to now. My wife and I now, I, I love water. But um, what happened next? I, I was viewing the desolate wasteland of hell, and something began lifting me up. And I didn't know what it was, but that was the Lord's presence lifting me up at that point. So I could see a little bit more of hell, and I could see that raging pit of fire with all the people screaming in it, and individual pits of fire with people in their own individual pit burning and the demons all around uh, clawing at me. Most of the ones that were around me were chained to the walls. I can't explain, but they were chained to the walls. I was glad they couldn't get to me, but uh, I, as I began, I looked at them, and I thought they were so powerful as the one that picked me up and threw me into the wall. I was like the weight of a water glass to it. I, like, they had tremendous strength, and I thought, who could fight off these creatures? No one. And you're just hopelessly lost there for eternity. And as I began going up into the darkness, it's already dark there, but there's just a little bit of light by the flames, and it barely travels. But as I went up into this tunnel, it was being raised up, it got darker and darker to us, pitch, absolutely pitch black. And I was in complete terror at that moment. And right then, when I was just desperately crying out, um, the Lord showed up, just in a bright light all of a sudden. And um, <laughs> what, 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 was the, what was the sensation in your body when you saw him? I want to go from one second earlier to be lost for eternity to the next second, knowing he put it, placed it back in my mind that I was a Christian. So I instantly knew who it was, that it was Jesus. I said, Jesus. And he said, I am. And I just fell at his feet like, I, like a dead man. I just collapsed at his feet. And I just wanted to worship him forever and ever. I wanted to thank him over and over and over again for rescuing me that he's the only way out of this place is knowing Jesus. And I was so grateful. And I... You know, when you're in his presence, you don't really want to ask questions. You just want to worship him. Uh, but yet thoughts came to my mind of questions. And I thought, Lord, why did you send me to this place? And he answered my thought. And he said, because many people do not believe in hell. He said, even some of my own people do not believe that hell exists. And that, that surprised me. But there's been many people that have called in to us, even on radio shows, that Christians that have said they don't believe in hell. But man, we're now, outside there. of your experience, you realize that if he hadn't gone there to be able to report back to us, and he had gone there because he was a, no a non-believer, he could have never gotten back. Has that thought ever crossed your mind what it would have been like to be there oh. for all of eternity? I, I just can't even really imagine. I mean, when I was there, I did imagine it. And it was horrible to live with that thought, to never get out. You know, there's nobody on earth that's ever experienced Outer hopelessness. You could always die to get out of it. All right, what else did he tell you when he came he to said, rescue you? Uh, he said uh, he wanted me to go tell people that he loves everyone. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. And he allowed me to feel a piece of his heart at that moment 
I saw people dropping one after another back down that shaft that I'd come up. And uh, I felt so bad for the people, but he allowed me to feel a little bit of his heart, what he feels for the people. And he wept over people going into hell. He doesn't want one person to go there. It hurt him uh, so much that the, the amount he allowed me to feel, I couldn't stand it. I had to ask him to stop. I can't stand feeling what you feel. Uh, just a little piece of what he let so you felt feel. being separated from God, and you didn't like that one bit, and then you felt his hurt over humans that choose to go to hell rather than surrendering to God. Exactly. Just like he wept over Jerusalem when he came into the city. He, he, he was weeping over the people. It hurts him more than you can imagine for people to go there. But he's a just God. Did he indicate when he's going to return? He just told me, uh, he said, I tell him I'm coming back very, very soon. And he repeated himself and said, I'm coming back very, very soon. Did you hear that? He said, I'm, how do, you, do you think that Bill had this experience just for the heck of it? It was for you. But wait till you find out what I'm going to find out from his wife, Annette, who witnessed when he came back. She'll be on the next segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. One new man. The convergence of Jews and Gentiles. The two becoming one new man in Yeshua. When Jews and Christians become one new man in Messiah Jesus, we will experience a move of God such as the world has never seen. If you want to experience an explosive outpouring of God's spirit, God's love, God's power, then log on to www.sidroth.org to learn more about the one new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Bill and Annette Weiss. Bill is basically minding his own business, and he finds himself dropping. He ends up in a cell in hell, real hell. And Jesus took his memory away from him that he was a believer and so he experienced what it was like to be in hell and not know Jesus and have no chance of reversal none eternity there but then you said that Jesus came he told you uh, what you had gone through because he wants you to tell people about this and then he said he was coming back soon now Annette this was uh, about three in the morning, and he spent, according to the book, 23 minutes in hell. Uh, so at about 3.23 or so, what did you hear? What did you observe? Well, I was in a sound sleep, Sid, and I knew it was 3.23 because I automatically turned to my left and I looked at the clock. So we had a big digital clock that said 3.23. And I heard screams. Bill was not beside me, so I proceeded down the hallway, and I found Bill in a state I've never seen him in. Um, if, if you know Is Bill, he an emotional person at all? No. If, Is I he mean, very level? He's very steady, consistent, um, calm, and more reserved by nature. Is he a real weeper? No, he's not a complainer. He's just, he's very, or a weeper, or he doesn't, um, his emotions don't go up and down. Hmm. He's stable. He's, he's stable. He's a very stable man. So, so when, what was he look? What 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 was he doing when you saw him? What did you hear? Well, I saw him in a fetal position on our living room floor, and he was holding the sides of his head, and he was screaming, "The Lord took me to hell. Pray for me. Pray for me. You know, pray that this fear goes out of my mind." And I was just like, I mean, of course, I was in shock at first. Um, I was relieved in one sense that he wasn't having a heart attack because when I found him like that, I thought, oh my, you know, what is happening? And so I just went up to him and I started to pray for him. There was no warning before you went to bed? There was nothing uh, unstable about what he was saying, doing, or thinking? No, we just had a no. I mean, we had gone to a prayer meeting, came home, went to bed, went to sleep like any other night. So nothing unusual. Okay. Only you can answer this. Uh, he he loved God before. He loves God now. Did he witness to everyone that could breathe and tell them about the reality of Jesus before this event? He was um, he was a, a more evangelistic person as far as his nature goes. Um, he would try to witness to clients and things like that. But after this experience, it was like 
an urgency of I've got to get on the phone, I've got to call my family, we've got to fly out there. So why? Well, the reality of hell just really makes you aware that this place is final. I mean, that people, and we have to open up our mouths. If we don't, they're going to go there. So I just felt like, you know, I've got to do everything I can in the short time God's given us and make it count and uh, witness to everybody that I can. Listen, when you were a young man, you, you went through something that should have been it. A shark, you were swimming, and a shark grabbed hold of you and literally was going to bite off, was it your arm or leg? My leg, I was with a friend surfing. And what happened? The shark grabbed me, pulled me off my board, bit my board right in half, and uh, grabbed my leg, pulled me down, and miraculously let me go. And the guy next to me got his leg torn off. So we watched him be drug up on the beach. But So that was fear. How did that fear compare to the fear you experienced in hell? That fear was terrible, but it was paled in comparison to what you go through in hell. It's no comparison. So I, I, I assume that the minute you came to your senses, you started telling everyone about this experience? Yes, I did. People don't have to believe me. It's not about believing me. It's about believing what the Bible has to say about hell, that there's scriptures, that over 150 scriptures well, wait about Wait a second. It. You believed in hell before this happened. What is right. the difference now? I did. I just, I knew it was fire, and I, I was, thank God I was saved from it. But I really didn't realize the severity of it how terrible it is that you, you do suffer actual literal burning fire. It's not metaphorical, it's real fire. You suffer thirst, hunger, you, you never get to sleep. You're exhausted, you need sleep. You don't get to sleep there ever. Uh, you, you never get to be with a person, your memory is intact. All these things you have to endure for eternity. Just one of them alone would, should kill you, but yet you, have to, you keep going. Uh, what about the, did you experience fear even after that event? Well, I, when she prayed, I asked the Lord to remove the fear because I could feel my body was dying. You, the body can't withhold that kind of, kind of fear and, and stay alive. And God did. He graciously took out all the fear of hell, but he left the memories of it. So now I can recall it, but I don't have to relive and, and, and relive that uh, awful fear that I experienced. But it still took me about a year to settle down from this whole thing. The next year was just, I wanted to grab everybody and witness to them and shake them up and make them aware that there's a real hell and that God doesn't want anybody to go there. He loves everybody and he doesn't want anyone to go. And, but it's a sad thing that people won't listen to the simple message of the gospel and take his free gift and, and receive it and, not, and escape this horrible place. One second after they die, it's too late. There's no turning back. They're never going to get out. Well, what about the person that says, well, I'm a mensch. I'm a pretty good person. I've never murdered anyone. Um, I'm, and I, 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 I'm a nice guy, and assuming there's a place called heaven, uh, after all, my rabbi told me, my priest told me, my imam told me that I'm going to be in heaven. So they told me, what would you say to them? That's right. Most people think that, that they're pretty good, and they probably are pretty good compared to people. But if you compare yourself to God, God's ways are perfect. Everything to do with him is perfect, and if we sin, if we lie, if we commit adultery, if we do any of these things, uh, that, that's punishable by death according to the, the Word of God. Uh, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. So people, it doesn't matter how good you are, your goodness pales in comparison to God's goodness. So you need, we all need a Savior. We're all sinners. We all fall short of his glory. So we're all in the same boat. We have to have a Savior, or we're going to go end up in this place of torment. And that... You didn't go through this no. experience, Thank but God. how has it affected you? His experience, how has it affected? Do you think that he hallucinated this whole thing? Come on, between no. the two of us. No, I actually said not at all. I, I know Bill, I know his character, I know his integrity, and from many people around him that, that knew him before we even met. So I absolutely believed him from, from the moment he spoke it out of his mouth, that's where he went. Um, I think how it's affected me probably the most is my own personal um, examination of my own life, of just wanting to pursue God and know Him and walk in holiness before Him as a Christian, because we throw that word out, Christian. What does that really mean? And um, I wanted to really get to know the Lord and walk that way. And then it also gave me much more of a compassion for people. And to think how selfish of me and at times where I, th I thought about how many times that I didn't open my mouth because I didn't feel led to say anything about God to them. Uh, Bill, 
do you sweat the small stuff anymore? No. After seeing <laughs> what you saw, I mean, I, 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 these other things are so pale they are. compared to this reality. The things we all get upset over in life, it's so short and temporal, and it's over. And it's just a, in a moment. The things that are important are really eternal things and pleasing the Lord. And uh, you, you know, as, as you both know, I'm Jewish. And 35 years ago, Jesus came into my bedroom. And I experienced, the very first thing that I experienced was his shalom, his peace. It was literally tangible. And you know what? I could not worry about anything. I went to bed not caring whether I lived or died. And when he came into my bedroom, all I could think was love, purpose, destiny. I don't care what you've heard about Jesus, even if you've been in a church or a synagogue or mosque your whole life. I tell you to ask the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to make Jesus, Jesus real to you. Repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry. And you want to know Jesus. It's simple, but it's everything. And everything without Jesus is nothing. Choose. Annette Weiss awakens in the middle of the night to find her husband on the floor screaming and shaking uncontrollably. On today's program, you have heard only a portion of Bill Weiss's visit to hell and back. Call now and get your copy of his book, 23 Minutes in Hell, and find out the entire story of what he saw, heard, and experienced in that place of everlasting torment and his deliverance by the hand of God. It's yours for a donation of only $15 postage paid. Ask for order number 1041. The book contains revelation knowledge from the Bible, from over 150 verses of scripture that refer to hell, and why God desires to save and deliver us from this eternal place of suffering. He answers these questions. Is hell a literal burning place? Where is hell? Do you have a body in hell? Are there degrees of punishment? Are there children in hell? Can good people go to hell? What assignment do demons have in hell? This is a great book to share with skeptics and doubters. Call and get your copy of 23 Minutes in Hell for a donation of $15. Postage is included. Or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify order number 1041 or log on to SidRoth.org. Hell is a real place. Don't allow your unsaved loved ones to go another day without hearing the truth about hell. No one has to go there. God's desire is that everyone escapes this everlasting place of torment. Call or write today to get your copy of this most important book. If you're encouraged and helped by these television programs, please consider assisting us with future productions. Send your tax-deductible gift to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Call toll-free at 1-800-548-1918 or visit our website at sidroth.org.